Okay, so great. Patrick Powers, we finally managed to carve out some time to make this possible. We've been talking about doing it for a while. Um, yep. But yeah, so you're London-based right now. You live just outside uh, the main part of London. Is that correct? Uh, no, sorry, in, uh, in Weybridge. Weybridge. Mm -hmm. It's a really beautiful area out here, but it's too far away from London. I want to move back to London soon. <laughs> But it's green where you are, on it, and it's sunny on a day like this, where you get to appreciate that. I'm oh, sure. it's beautiful, absolutely. Excellent. So, look, you have um, completed the Power Profile online at teamme.app, um, and you've seen that entrepreneur version. So, teamme.app slash ENT takes you through to a specific profiling um, description, which focuses on, from an entrepreneurial point of view, the character strengths uh, that you exhibit as an individual. But on this session, we're able to go deeper than what sort of publicly available uh, by looking at your full archetype spectrum, as we call it, where we're looking at the relative strengths of all six of these archetypal characters that may make up left brain characters and right brain characters. And we can talk a bit about how they reflect what's driving you in life at this particular time. Um, I know you've got a lot of history that you could talk and share about here, but could I just ask you to, to focus in on what you're doing right now, your work with Foundation and Entrepreneurs in London, just give a little snapshot of where things are at for you right now, and also maybe a little sort of snapshot of where you see things being in six months or a year's time, because that will mm. impact where we are, uh, influence where we are with this uh, discussion. Yeah, so I'm two, doing two basic things, or you know, you categorize what I do in two different camps. There's one building entrepreneurial communities um, through Entrepreneurs in London. We have built now, or very close to, I think we'll actually this week break through 27,000 members. Wow. Uh, and the basically established us as the biggest business meetup group in Europe, second biggest in the world. Um, we are soon going to to change that, the name to Founder Nation, because I want to start scaling worldwide. Uh, first UK and then worldwide. Uh, we're building a platform to enable the members to be able to connect with each other much, much better. Basically, the purpose of Entrepreneurs in London is to help entrepreneurs speed up their journey to freedom, success, significance, whatever it is that they want to achieve. Um, and I, I really strongly believe in entrepreneurship. I think it's the, it's the number one way to create change in the world. And I have lots of lots of kind of big, big, big picture things that I want to I want to affect change in certain areas before I leave this planet. Um, and um, I think actually more than focusing on those particular smaller areas, if you will, is to empower entrepreneurs in general to go out there and succeed because then they'll make amazing thing happen. Things happen. Wow. Yeah. Excellent. Um, Excellent. And, um, and it's tough, very tough journey to be an entrepreneur. So I think that, that being in, in a tribe, a, a community like this is extraordinarily important. And I, I see the power of it over time, the people that actually really get into the community, that they, they get incredible benefit out of it. Uh, the other thing I do in is that, that my, my field of expertise is in, um, in communication, is an influence um, I'm a copywriter, marketing strategist, so I help small business owners um, become lead generation machines. Okay, that's one of my focus. Uh, attract more leads, attract more people to your business, get your name out there, but do it in a way, not just for the sake of getting your name out there, but do it in a way that actually converts very profitably. Tweaking every, every single level or every single step in your sales funnel to get more sales. Um, and then very importantly, to keep them for longer as well, to create that royalty. So I teach yeah. both personal influence, how to influence people when you meet them one-to-one, -one, when you're a networking event, but also mass influence, how do you really get out there and get noticed and, and convert skeptics into um, ambassadors for you. Mm. That's been really uh, interesting to understand, and you've had such a journey to get to that place, which I've heard you speak at several of the Entrepreneur in London events. You've given just a little snapshot of how your life has got you to this place and the importance now that you're laying upon networking, uh, upon clarity of communication, of, of impacting uh, the audiences, of creating audiences and then impacting them. Um, it's, it's really been insightful, and I personally have benefited from a number of the teachings and the 
uh, nudges and sometimes the kick up the butt that I've needed from you um, in, in some of those areas as well. So that's been really interesting uh, in terms of what I've benefited and I've seen other people benefit. And there is a particular flavor to entrepreneurs in London, which actually, interestingly enough, um, does come out through the profile. Now, very much it will, wherever you are, a leader or an entrepreneur is going to very often create a culture around themselves, whether they intend to or not, the values that they carry deep inside um, form and forge the culture um, of whatever situation that they're creating, whatever company they're creating. And we see that actually with your profile. So do you remember the two strongest characters in the power profile when you saw that displayed on the app itself? Yeah, it was the sage and the lover. Mm-hmm. And was that, was that a surprise to you? How, how did that kind of strike you to start with? No, it, I, I don't think it was actually a surprise. Uh, what I was surprised about how little difference there actually was between the different categories for me. There was not there was not one that I was like standing out as being enormously big and another one enormously small. They were they were kind of a little bit balanced. That that actually it surprised me a little bit. Okay. In 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 in, in terms of the, the the lover is uh, I'm I'm trying to to get much more love into our community in terms of like really creating that that feeling of hey we're family we're we're in this together we're family we're friends this is not just another meeting right i mean that's just like there are so many meetings why would you even go to another meeting i don't even understand it um, <laughs> you know the older i get the more the more i i, I want to be part of, of of a group of friends like really friends that work together on important projects and changing the world and making things happen in business and that's what we're trying to create here yeah, and there's I think one of the reasons why um, why I feel so strongly about family is that we actually, when I grew up, we actually did, didn't have much of a family bond. I didn't, I didn't really like my family. I don't think they like me, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> so, so I think this is this is a need that I've had throughout my life to have that family around me that I'm now actually creating through this um, uh, through this community. Yeah, yeah. And why not? And I think all of us, whether we have come to, into life and have been nurtured and have been given great opportunities, or whether there's been a huge challenge we've had to kind of grow inside and, and in a way compensate for, it still makes us who we are and helps us to, to uh, define who we are to make the contribution we're going to in the world. And sometimes I think some of the people who've made the greatest impact have come from a an area which they weren't well fed, weren't well nurtured, weren't well supplied, but they saw that and they pushed through. There's a book I've been reading recently, The Power of Broke, uh, and it shows how, um, how having nothing helps you to, to get more creative and to do stuff that the rich kids would never have thought of doing because it's not a conventional path. It's like, well, what can I do? is the question. And if you find something, even when you're broke, you can find a way of making things happen in a remarkable way. So yeah. it's interesting how you, you, in a sense, it's a compensation, but it actually has led to a group that has a unique uh, sense of value behind it because people do comment yeah. on that. And all of your team who help run the show, um, they are all of a like mind and you train them and encourage them to do that, to shake hands, to speak to people, to try and remember their names, to go back to them later, to connect people. There's a real care there that is nurtured and encouraged uh, you know, by you as the leader. And that is really evident. Yeah. So it, it comes through, that flavor permeates the whole, uh, the whole event, but your team yeah. in particular. Yeah, and you know what's, what's really interesting is that it, it's only relatively recent that I really started to use that side of me, and I think it was because, I don't know, I was just kind of so focused on doing the work and getting the business and, and surviving in business and all that kind of stuff that I really didn't stop to think about who am I really, and I, I did that one and a half years ago, and so, well, actually, almost two years ago, and said, no, I, I've got to rethink the way that I run entrepreneurs in London, and I can have more of what I really am about. And since I start doing that, it's just like, it's just flowing. It's just, it's going, it's becoming better and better and better, and I'm using more and more and more of that side of myself. 
Um, and I'm, I'm more and more pleased with it. I get more and more enjoyment out of it. And it seems like we're, we're attracting more and more great people as well. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Both kind of at the low end of, of punters coming in and saying, who are they? Because there's a lot of new people at every event that I've been to, like a significant proportion of them are new first time they've been there. Uh, but also at the higher end, you're getting higher and higher levels of speaker people who've made more and more impact in the world and, and are willing to share that with the, with the guys yeah. as well. So it's, it's, yeah. it's growing in, in every way. So look, if yeah. we can dive into your, your full uh, archetype profile. So we've majored on the power profile says sage and lover. Um, and the sage, just to reiterate then, it's the, the character who is looking at what's real, is concerned about evidence and facts, um, is a, a sense of history as well. It's like, how did we get to where we are? What's real about the situation? Let's get clear on that and let's make sure we're measuring the right thing here. Um, and yet that's equally balanced with a, with a lover character that is exactly the same strength from the power pro, uh, the full archetype profile. Um, and both of them are coming in at about 6.8. Uh, which is very mature, very well-developed characters. Uh, and they're just taking the lead. The interesting thing that beyond that, and we'll look at these as well, is that the mystic and the warrior characters are just a little step behind, followed by the sovereign. And then last of all... I was quite, I was quite uh, surprised about the mystic, actually, that, that I was scoring so high on it. Yeah. yeah. And yet, well, we'll unpack what that's about. Um, but just to reiterate then, so the sage is, is looking at the facts and the evidence. Now, sometimes that analytical side can actually be to the detriment of the lover character. And if you're a Sherlock Holmes, you would have really strong sage and the lover would be kind of through the floor <laughs> because you don't yeah. have the ability to connect with people whatsoever. There's no empathy no ability to understand somebody else's position. It's just like, well, the facts say this, so that's the truth. Yeah. What are you concerned about? You know, why are you crying? Sort of thing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's your old home. I, I don't used to be way more like that when I was younger. Yeah, and, and yet you've allowed that lover character to develop over time. And we do shift. We do shift over time. Mm -hmm. And certain cultures will nurture certain characters as well more than others. So every um, one of the things with that app, and I do ask what country people are from, and it's a tedious list, but it really helps in terms of it. we're actually building out a map globally now about entire mm. countries and their archetype profiles, the dominant archetypes within each of those. One day we'll get it down to cities, <laughs> maybe wow. down to postcodes, but That's right really, now. <laughs> That's really fascinating, though. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm from Denmark, and I think in general we're more towards being analytical in Denmark than towards being emotional. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And so you see that often with um, individual cultures have that certain way of looking at things. And the Scandinavian sort of cultures, are, you know, have a lot of that, which is why there's some really strong IT firms coming out of Scandinavia are well established, mm -hmm. you know, in the last yeah. 30 years. Um, yeah. so that's that's fabulous and yet now the lover character has also come up to balance that out and it's very clear that just in meeting you that you have a care and a concern for the person in front you know um and and you have that degree of empathy and that ability to connect with people so these two characters are neck and neck so you mentioned the mystic and you saw when i sent the gra graph to get this clearer picture of who else you know, because when you get the power profile, you don't know whether one of the other characters is just a step below or, or is all the way down on the scale. Um, mm -hmm. And yet there's a big story to be told as we unpack that. So the mystic character is looking for, um, essentially I sum up the mystic as for entrepreneurs is often the innovator. So they are led by a desire to transcend and to transform. So they're not stuck with the past. They don't go, oh, we've never done it that way, so let's, you know, how we, mm. we can't direction. They will say, no, no, let's transcend that. Let's transcend everybody else's rules. Let's transcend the ways things have been done in the past. Let's transcend all kinds of limitations with an aim to transform, to create something new. So Steve yeah. Jobs, for example, his power profile would be sovereign mystic 
in that he was definitely the boss, but he was led by a very, very strong desire to dream up something new and then pull it into the present. Some mystics get yeah. stuck in the dream and never make it real. And they, they live in la-la land, in cloud cookie land, um, and they, they don't get real. Whereas the, the, the ones that are balanced with the sage will see something new and then the sage will say, okay, so practically, how do we make that happen and operationalize that? And then you hand it to the warrior to get it done. Does that make sense? You see that that's oh, yeah, happen? absolutely. I can see big, big time. In fact, my first successful business was in, um, in a field in health that was very innovative. Uh, even revolutionary. And then, and then since then, I was like, I realized that I thrive on coming up with solutions that are on the cutting edge. Uh, being a pioneer uh, is really something that drives me. Yeah. So it's as if this conversation goes on in your head. Now, I don't know whether the sage or the lover leads because they're both there. But I think it probably goes this way. New situation, new people. You, your first thought is, let's connect with the people that we've got here. Let's make sure that there's a, a sense of connection, there's harmony, there's unity with, the, with this. There's a sense of, let's, let's make this body of people into a bit more of a team. And then straight off the back of that, there's this thought, and it could have come before this, because they are absolutely neck and neck, which is like, okay, guys, let's get real. Girls, what have we got here? What's, what's real about this situation? What can we measure? What can we see? Where exactly are we at? Let's get that clarity, factual clarity. But then from that, as soon as those two are satisfied, up comes the mystic to say, right, what can we make of this? Let's imagine something better and put that in front of us. And then okay. shortly after, does that make sense in terms of the... Yeah, actually, I just think it's, it's flipped around and I can see now my graphs yeah. and Ace and the Mystic are very close to each other, and that's so interesting you say that because I think you're absolutely, absolutely 100% right about when I meet someone, I want to build a team, create that trust, create that, you know, tribe. Because, I mean, if you don't, <laughs> it's kind of my logical thinking coming in here as well, that it's not just, not just social for the sake of being social, but I mean, we need to be social to, to make things happen. We need to create trust. We need to create a, a band of people here uh that that work well together and then the second thought when that is established um is actually what can we create like okay. what could we have happened from from this you know let's let's brainstorm some ideas you know where can we go and so on and so on and then the analytical side actually comes into it as a uh, third Okay, yeah. So these are all very, very close. Um, and yeah. again, you, you'd commented um, just before we got talking here that some of the questions, were, yeah, I said, yeah, I'm still open to refining some of the questions. I find that they're more accurate than I expected them to be. But still, some mm. people read the question and go, hang on, is that a double negative? How do I answer that? And I okay. Yeah. I Sometimes you've got two words in there and you say, well, one's true, but the other isn't. So how do I answer yeah. that? So um, it's it's still we'll we'll work on this and get this good. But I, trying to keep it down to thirty questions was it was key for me. You don't want this endless survey, you know, keeping it down there. But what it does do is it elevates values. Um, and if nothing else, I, the the profile here will help to. Um, raise conversations to bring up topics of conversation and from a coaching standpoint it's absolutely key that you can see what's driving somebody but you know the specific order it may shuffle a little bit over time it's interesting to have that comment from you um it's just i also imagine that in your head there are some sentences that start with the sage but drift into the mystic or start with the mystic and by the end of the mm. sentence moved into the other one it's not, it's not like you're locked in with one character having these guys so close to each other um, indicates that you have the flexibility to go from one space to another without real hindrance. It's not like you're... Yeah, that is interesting. Now, now that we're having this conversation, I'm starting to think about more about my thinking processes. And I can, I can clearly see now that yeah, typically, once I trust someone, once I like someone, then it's like, what can we create together? And then it's big pictures, ideas, it's creativity. Mm. And once we start to figure out, like, oh, wow, that's a great idea, then let's look at the facts. Where are we standing? Does this have legs? Uh, you know, let's, let's look at the statistics and, and the numbers and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah. So if quite often you have the challenge between the mystic and the sage, that if the sage is really strong, sometimes the sage can, uh, can kill the mystic's ideas a bit too soon. But yeah. we do need the mystics, we do need the accountants at some point to come along and say, okay, but let's get real about the numbers here, because the numbers tell us this story. And you do need them. You can't ignore that. Um, you have to be clear about numbers, but you also now need to allow and nurture the mystic and give them the room to create their 101 ideas and yeah. not to shoot them down, because some of those ideas, if you allow them room to grow, will actually come through to something amazing as Steve mm -hmm. But also yeah. people said, Steve, you live in this dis reality distortion zone. You're not in the real world. Yet at the same time, where and when that was harnessed and pushed towards the sages and the warriors to get the thing done, they had a hard time with him. They didn't find him easy to work with. But he, he they together, they created some extraordinary products that, as everybody knows, are the best in the world uh, at what they're doing, you know? Yeah. So that's all interesting. Let's quickly look then at the other characters. Once all of that is satisfied, very soon after the sage, the mystic, the lover, in comes the warrior. And you are, then it means that you, as soon as you've got that confidence that you've got a connection, you've got a great idea, you've looked at the reality of the situation, that at that point it's like, well, let's start doing it. You're not, you know, the warrior's not several steps below, it's just below the mystic. Mm. There. So, and, and everything's within, I mean, it's not even one, you know, grade apart here. They're all at six and just under seven. So <clears throat> um, that's mm. true there. Once you have got things into action, after that, you begin to think about, oh, okay, actually, guys, we need to, operationally, we need a bit of structure here. So it's almost as if you're more driven into certain actions, and then you look at, the, the, the bigger pictures. Like, oh, actually, I think we need some more team members. Oh, actually, we need another system to be able to put that mm, together. Yeah. And that, that's been my, like, like, definitely my weakness, like, super weakness throughout my life. Uh, and funny enough, literally within the last week, um, you know, I've had, never had any team members, um, paid team members. Uh, and I literally hired my first two employees in the last week, and I'm hiring probably another, another one today. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm working on that, and there's something that's come incredibly quickly. So it's suddenly almost like it's clicked into place. Oh my God! I, you know, that's, that's a weakness of mine. Yeah. So that's and also, really also it's been a weakness of mine that I've taken taken action way too soon. That the warrior has been like, okay, great idea, let's go, boom. Yeah. <laughs> so I would say the sage is something that I had to develop. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's really interesting. What we've got then is the, um, the sovereign character is, uh, in your typical way of approaching situation, the, what, the sovereign character is subservient to the others. So it is going to kick in in essentially fifth place, and yet it is over five. It's still a very mature and strong character as long as the voices of the other guys have been satisfied first. Mm. And that's, that's like, satisfy this, please, first, satisfy that, then this, then this. And then it's a case of, ooh, actually, now I need to get the structure in this. Now, the challenge that we've got there at the end as well, there's, there's a positive and a little challenge in here as well, is that um, if clearly there are some people that would lead with the sovereign and then get the others to serve the vision that the sovereign puts together. So the mystic can come out with general ideas, but there's a difference between the innovation that the mystic brings, which tends to be a bit dreamy or a bit specific about a specific challenge or problem, whereas the sovereign is thinking about the whole realm. And it's interesting to hear you more recently talking about founder nation. You're beginning to talk more sovereign in your language because you hear all of these characters reflected in language patterns. Mm. Um, talking about global influence and setting up things on a global perspective and structurally speaking, uh, etc., that's the sovereign is rising. So I suspect that that sovereign has been nudging up over the last year in particular, and maybe yeah. a little bit before that, and particularly in the last few months, that that character has been getting stronger. You are over five, that's a mature, strong character, but the others are even more so. Um, so there's a lot of energy going on in the way that you're approaching this. Mm. 
Yeah. Now, I'd raise the challenge point. The jester is last on the list. Now, yep. um, this, now you're, you're it's interesting because I know that you will set aside time for your team and for other people for socializing, and uh, that's probably driven primarily by the lover character. Um, but there's also a sense in which you will let your hair down. It's just that it's, you kind of need to tick all the other boxes before you allow yourself to do that. Oh, so, yeah, that's it. And then I think, I mean, that, that's something that I had to work on and something that I, I've, I've you know has grown especially in the last year but but you're absolutely right that's for me it's like okay we need to focus on the bottom line first once that is out of the way once the revenue is in the business good no okay so then we can have some fun let's have some fun yeah yeah i love fun and i would love to have more of that in my life and more of that that gesture coming out in me it's just like it's almost like there hasn't been room for it yeah uh, but the truth is you've not allowed yourself to go there i mean i was i was yeah. interviewing somebody the other day who actually was a sovereign and then they were jester <laughs> it was like whoa okay so as soon as you feel like you've got the structure you've delegated stuff to the team and you're confident the team are going to take this forward the next thing on your mind is let's make this fun <laughs> you know yeah. it's really interesting and they had a okay. you know, they carry that lightness with them, and yet that didn't mean they dropped the ball because the danger with the jester is that you can be too carefree and you cannot yeah. take things seriously enough. Um, but if they feel like they've got a team which is, no, that's being handled, then actually they can do that. And so, so that mm -hmm. can make some people really um, attractive, almost infectious with the way that they take that forward. But you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're a connected man, but you're also quite a serious man in some ways. And then once those boxes are ticked, okay, we'll let ourselves have some fun. And you know how to have fun. And still, it's still a four. It's not a weak character. If it is under three, then I probably wouldn't find you that inspiring to be around. <laughs> so it's not, you know, but we know that hanging around, we know that we've got to get the other things in place first of all. Um, mm -hmm. And if, if, if it came to negotiation, then I would know the sorts of things that would appeal to you if I was to speak to you or put a, uh, an offer in your way. I know, you know, I know what I'd be talking to you about. This would cause real good connection. This would help to build network. This would give a sense of community. And in your mind, things are going, yep, ooh, I like, like the sound of that. And then I'm saying we can transform this we can make it something new and, and here's the numbers which i think back that up and, and i'm imagining that i'm ticking all your boxes there and i've already started to take some action over here but let's discuss what other action we can take to move this forward or how we can refine these things um, mm. after that you know we can then say oh yes and of course we haven't forgotten how to build structure for long lasting secure you know um sort of structures and developments that we can take forward because this thing should be bigger and affect more people. It's effectively talking about growing the kingdom. And then we'll talk about, oh yeah, and then we're gonna have, make sure there's a good amount of socializing and fun and letting hair down and entertainment along the way. And that sort of way of speaking to you at a pitch is likely to, have I given some secrets away there? <laughs> I, I would suspect that that's the sort of pitch you'd respond to. Sure. No, absolutely. Yeah. So what would happen, as we've only got a few minutes left here, what would happen if you took, it took that sovereign character as a point of focus and really stepped it up? What if it went up two steps? What if it came up to the, even above, from 5.1, 5.2? What if it jumped up to 7, which mm. was just above all the others? What would that do for you if that, was to happen would it how would it feel to start with just thinking about that how does it feel to even think about something like that happening uh, right now i would feel it because 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 i actually felt it this week okay is relief mm-hmm right it's almost like i'm letting go of control trusting other people to do good work and then by by doing what their job is to do, I can focus on what what I'm good at, um, mm. and it is really really big relief. I know previously I would have been nervous about it. Yeah, yeah, letting go of the reins, you know, letting go of the control. Um, yeah, but now it's actually it actually feels really really good. Yeah, 
Interesting. And I would suspect that as you've got these employees of your own now, um, as well as the bigger vision that even without doing anything purposefully, this sovereign character is going to start edging up. And mm. to comment here as well, if I see anybody's profile where all the characters are within three bands of each other, you know, here you've got four is your lowest and just under seven is your highest, you've got that. It's immediately talks to me about a leadership profile. It mm. also means that you've probably gone through the mill <laughs> with a lot of challenges across the board in your life in all of these areas so that you've matured and developed that way. Um, but it does indicate a leadership profile, especially everything is within two apart from the jester, but even the jester's within a band of three compared to the mm. others. And that's a really interesting, clearly a leadership profile uh, overall okay. and a mature one of that. And yet it's still also interesting to say, as I press forward, for my vision if I was to up any one of these characters what would happen if and that's why I wanted to put that sovereign sort of challenge your way and there are ways to accelerate that to get your thinking even more into that sovereign state to um mm. to, to to bring that alive and then to live off the benefits of that as well so yeah. uh, a number of tools you know, things it's, that it's I've got. funny that if, if, if that happened, uh, or when it happens, what I, what I can feel, if it happened now, if it happened today, that like, I have just had team to take care of all the, you know, small, um, annoying tasks and all that kind of stuff, that that will allow me to be much more in the mystic, I think, and, and warrior, just like really out there taking action, and the mystic of thinking big, being creative. Yeah. That's, I think yeah. that I'm, I actually miss more of that, or love to have more of that in my life. Yeah, allowing room and space for that, that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I've, heard that, I've heard that from a few. In fact, Matt Black, I did a session with him a few weeks ago, and he talked about the same. He'd say, I'd like to allow more room for that mystic. Mm. I want He's doing a lot of speaking. He's doing a lot in investor circles now. Um, but he says, with the speaking side of things, I want to go more to that mystic and be more visionary in that sense, um, mm. where actually very strong on the sovereign. He's like, Here's an opportunity. Let's structure it. <laughs> oh, he's amazing in that. I mean, literally unbelievable. I, I, I don't think I've ever met anybody that that is just like, all right, yeah. we should do this, 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 and we'll outsource this, and I'm not going to do any of it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And so that yeah. session with him unpacks the sovereign character in a remarkable way. It was really good yeah. to have that exploration. And yet, he's also quite strong with the mystic, and he said, I'd like to see more of that uh, to mm. come out where it's more of that dreaming visionary stuff to go to places that the Sovereign, the sovereign's very pragmatic with the sovereign side of vision, whereas the mystic's like, I'm not even, I'm, forget pragmatism, I'm just going to dream, you know, what if, yeah. what if, what if. So that's yeah. fascinating. So look, we are almost out of time. I don't know if there's any last comments that you might have on this, but it's been fascinating just to unpack that. Um, I will just sort of stress that when you start getting uh, profiles across teams, and it would be interesting for you to do the profiling with the, your new employees. Um, I did this with Ash Ali and his U-Hubs team recently, and he said, yeah, this really confirms where I'm heading the shifts I've made recently but also the hires I've made and need to make that I was looking for people at this and this, the whole profiling thing, it was really a confirmation to him that he had the right people lined up to do what was necessary uh, because every business needs to have a slightly different profile. Otherwise, they're not really doing anything unique, but they also need to have us across the board. They do need somebody meeting all of these needs because this is kind of the holistic approach that a person and a business does need um, yeah. in order to be successful. Excellent. Don't really have any other questions. I mean, this is this is going to be another conversation about you know how to develop the, that that sovereign side of myself. Yeah. So um, what I will do is I'll ping your way for free an audio that I created a while ago called the Sovereign Activation, um, and I've got one for each of the archetypes. So if anybody needs to step up, you literally just listen to the audio. You'll hear sovereign words spoken with sovereign tonality with sovereign music stirring you up in the background and because right. of the language the tonality and the music which stirs it all up you literally as you listen to it i'd like your feedback on it but people say i literally feel like I, i'm something in me is growing and you can do that for the warrior, the mystic the lover the jester whatever you want to do but the sovereign one i'll send your way and then it'd be great to hear in a week's time if you're listening i used to listen to these things daily and sometimes still do um, to stretch right. myself 
across the archetypes, but the sovereign one's coming your way, and it'd be great awesome. to hear uh, a little bit of feedback on that later. Brilliant. Definitely will do. Thank you so much, Pat. That was really interesting. Thank you so much. We'll talk again soon, but thanks very much for this call. It's been enlightening. You are. Welcome. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So there you have an insider's view of one of these signature impact consultations where we understand all six archetypes and how they're impacting somebody's life and how a shift and a change there could seriously help them to move significantly further forward in their chosen field. These archetype profiles will enable you to zero in on the specific character traits that you need to develop or at least become aware of in order to move forward without hindrances, without feeling stuck. This is where we diagnose and discover the hidden code to your unique personal strengths, the next step to your path to purpose and to profit. So I really do encourage you now to book your session with me online. Teamme.com slash impact gives you the details and the link. So go there now, book your session with me, and we will have an amazing time of unpacking who you really are, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, and defining a path to go forward as well as giving you some of the tools there and then that you can pick up and utilize to create your signature impact.